It'll still do me good. Oh, <laughs> here we go. Hi, Dad here. Well, Carl Trent here. And I want to help you have a perfect vacation. Um, welcome to Lunch with Dad. This is what we talk about every week on Lunch with Dad. It's going to Disney World and having a simple, fun, magic, and a perfect vacation. Let's get started. Got a lot to talk about today. Got all kinds of notes. Yeah, all kinds of stickies on the notes. All right, so here's what we're going to do. First, we got to talk about our partners right there. CelebrationShirts.com. They're pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> love CelebrationShirts.com. They do a great job. If you if you go over to their Facebook page, Facebook.com slash CelebrationShirts, you can see some of the people in the parks wearing their Celebration shirts. Uh, lots of beautiful um, uh, um, beautiful um, things you can choose, shirts you can choose from. I can't think of the word. It's going to be that kind of day. Sorry. Not off to a great start. But anyway, uh, CelebrationShirts.com. They do a great job. If you, well, we'll get back to that in a little bit. All right. So today we got something special going on. We do this every once in a while. We're going to have a giveaway. Yay. We're going to give away a, yeah, this one's not, this is a blank copy. Again, we gave one away a few weeks ago. These things are cool. They're just like a bunch of blank pages. Great to take, oh, by the way, it's Dad's book that's coming up here in a couple weeks. We're going to talk about that in just a minute, but um, we're just going to give away the blank copies. Great thing for keeping track of your vacations, writing notes about your trips, or just getting autographs, or just whatever you want to use it for. If you want to try to win the book today, uh, just write, I want the book, down in the comments, and at the end, we'll pick a random winner, and I'll mail you the book, the blank book. The blank book, yes, it's blank, um, but, all right, so, if you want to enter the contest that we're having today, blank book, sign up, I want the book, uh, down in the comments. Speaking of comments, um, in just a little bit, I'll be answering questions. If you have any questions, you can put them right down in the comments below. Um, it, it would really help us if you would like, like this side, like or share um, Dad's uh, Lunch with Dad. So uh, it would really help us out. It just, you know, all of that helps. The, the more the merrier. Everybody gets to see it. The more people get to see it, the more people stop the, stop in and watch, the better off we are. All right. So, uh, okay, what else do we need to do? Oh, every perfect vacation starts with the plan. So let's talk about the plan for today. I'm going to start off with the rant. i got a couple of them, actually, today. Um, <clears throat> then we'll do the news, uh, the tip of the week, tip of the week. Uh, and then I'll be answering questions. I've got like six or seven questions that came in on our Ask Dad page. I'll do those, and then we'll move on to your questions that come in live. So if you've got a question, stick it down in the comments, and uh, I'll be answering them here in about 30 minutes or so. All right, so, and then I'll have a few final thoughts, and we'll give away that blank book. <clears throat> All right, so, the rant this week. Um, interesting thing, a couple interesting things happen on Facebook. Yeah, I watch, I, I, I read lots of Facebook. I see lots of Facebook posts, posts, and for some reason, my Facebook feed is filled with Disney stuff. Imagine that, Disney World stuff. Imagine that. So, um, as I was scrolling through my Facebook feed this week, uh, first thing I saw, one, one day I saw this uh, post uh, that had a picture of three jars. It's like it was a, in a shower. And there were shampoo, conditioner, body wash. There were three big bottles, you know, with pumps on it. And it was that, it was that wash that Disney uses. And I thought, hmm, interesting. And the caption said it was from the Port Orleans, from the shower, a shower in the Port Orleans. Oh, wait a minute. Is Disney changing? Is there, are they doing away with those little, let me just 
those little individual soap. Yeah, it was just like the same color as this. It was the H2O brand. These little individual soap things. Is Disney going to do away with these cool little things? Um, I don't know about this. Disney, don't you know that we take these things home and we share them with other people? And if you'd go back to the Mickey ears or the Mickey brands on the logo, it would really help. Uh, you know, <clears throat> I think Disney is looking to economize, uh, to go away from the, the things that you can take home. I mean, yeah, Disney is not that expensive. This thing probably costs you 25, 30 cents. I'm imagining, um, why, why would you change that? Just to save just a little bit of money, especially when you're raising prices out of off the yeah, crazy. Uh, anyway, Disney, bad idea. But we'll see. It's probably a test, and we'll see how it goes. So if you get to a place where they're doing this, you don't like it, tell somebody. Not me. Somebody from Disney. Anyway, all right, that's rant one. Rant two. This one is even more disturbing. <clears throat> okay, so Facebook pops up. Tower of Terror is closing. Whoa, stop. It ends up, it's a joke post. This is not funny. You know, this is one room, rumor, Tower of Terror closing. This is one rumor that's not funny because it wasn't true. It was just a joke. It was just somebody planning clickbait or, bait or something. Uh, it, it's not funny. This is not something that you should be joking about. This is another reason I don't like Disney rumors. People see rumors, Disney World. Ah, gotta look, gotta look. Um, and I don't like Disney rumors because... They don't always come true. You know, how many, well, Wreck-It Ralph. Disney even announced Wreck-It Ralph a year ago. And it's still Stitch's Great Escape. It's still to this day. Stitch's Great Escape was supposed to close last year, in time for the Christmas, before the Christmas break. Um, but here we are in summertime, and Stitch's Great Escape is still open. And Wreck-It Ralph hasn't even started to be constructed. So... Um, you know, don't, rumors just, yeah, you can look at them, but don't get panicked about them. Just relax and see if they come true. Um, just, that was really, really nasty little thing. I can't find it anymore, so I think maybe <clears throat> somebody has taken it down. But uh, that was a crazy rumor that came up this week. All right, enough of me ranting. Here, let's move on to the news. Time for the news of the week. Um, if you if you noticed, I wrote a blog. There was a blog post this week, a little news item this week that uh, um, <clears throat> Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party Tickets. My buddy Patrick at the official ticket center is now selling Mickey a discounted Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party Tickets. The first time ever Disney has offered <clears throat> discounted tickets to the parties. Now, it's not every night, and you've got to call, and you've got to talk to them about what's available and what discounts there are. But, uh, it, and Tatiana, I'll put the link down to the post in the comments. But, if yeah, by the way, Stephanie, who's usually my... my my number one assistant, she she is off today. And so my second assistant, my number two assistant, who's not, not any worse than number one, she's just number two. Uh, she's helping me out today, Tatiana. Say hi, Tatiana. Um, <clears throat> so Tatiana's helping me today. She's going to put down the comments in the links, or the links, whatever. She's going to put it down so you can read it. All right, so call... Um, Patrick, if you want to talk about getting Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party tickets, their phone number is 877-406-4836. You can give them a call. <clears throat> any ticket problems, any ticket things you need to talk about, they sell discounted Disney tickets. They're, they're about a mile away from Disney World. They'll deliver them to your hotel. They'll deliver them to your house. They'll send them to your house, whatever you want. Uh, they take good care of you. So give Patrick a call. Tell him Dad sent you. He'll take very care of you. All right. Minivans. There was news this week on minivans. Um, <clears throat> they are now at the Wilderness Lodge. Disney is rolling out the tests. A, a little 
week by week. Um, so this week they added the Wilderness Lodge to the test. So you've got the Boardwalk Inn, the Yacht Club, the Beach Club, and now the Wilderness Lodge uh, are now being served by minivans. Um, and that just kind of tells me I think probably the next one will be the Animal Kingdom Lodge. But I could be wrong. I, I have no idea. But it just made, would make sense if they tried the Animal Kingdom Lodge next. So minivans are coming all over the place. Um, I wouldn't expect them at the Pop Century and the Art of Animation just because, well, forget it. They might go. They're going to go everywhere. Uh, okay, next, um, next item on the list. Well, I don't even know if I should really talk about this. I'm still a little bitter about it, but the mom's panel is open. Um, Disney, you had your chance. Nope, I'm not applying again. <laughs> but if if you know Disney, if you're interested, uh, you can apply for the mom's panel. Um, I applied two times. They didn't take me. So I started Dad's Guide. <laughs> Just kidding. That was rude. Oh, good grief. Shouldn't have done it. Yeah, I should have. <laughs> Disney had a shot. Um, anyway, mom's panel applications are going out there. Oh, we've got to play some music on this next one. Uh, here we go. So sad. So sad. Sometimes you feel so sad. Yeah, this is sad. Sad news. Express bus service is ending. This is the... This is the new service to go between the parks <clears throat> that they that Disney rolled out at the first of the summer. Um, it's being canceled. Uh, they canceled. They stopped taking day riders, getting a one-day pass. They stopped that on uh, Wednesday and next week on, I think it's Wednesday also, next Wednesday. If people that bought a week pass before Wednesday, they'll be able to use it, but uh, the express bus service is just no more. They just didn't have enough. They weren't selling enough <clears throat> tickets to, to make it practical. Uh, you know, they raised prices a couple of weeks after it started, so uh, it just never made sense. It just never worked economically. Um, it is a great service to go between the parks without having to go through security, but it just didn't work economically. So bye-bye, <clears throat> so sad, to the express bus service. Okay, <clears throat> next item in the news. Um, it didn't take long, but the signs are now up for Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, the new ride that's going to go where the great movie ride was. So the signs went up just almost immediately. Sunday, the great movie ride closed, and I think Monday, the signs were up for Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. It looks pretty cool. We're just going to have to wait and see. Uh, okay, and then the last uh, news item of the day... <laughs> Yeah, this one's about the Muppet Show, um, the, the Muppets. The Muppet Courtyard there in front of the Muppets Theater over in Disney Hollywood Studios, it's going away. No, not really. It's, it, it, the name is going away. It's not going to be the, the Muppet Courtyard anymore. Um, Disney is opening a new area back there by the Muppets um, that... We used to go back into um, the the back the back lot where you had all those fake buildings back there. So Disney's opening a new area. That's going to be the entrance to Star Wars Land, or what is it? Star Wars Galactic Edge, or what? Anyway, I, I got to learn that name. I've got I got it. I got two years, but I got to learn that name. So the new new Star Wars area. That's going to be kind of the entrance right through there. And so uh, Disney is kind of putting something new in the entrance there. They're calling it the Grand Avenue. Grand Avenue is going to open next month. Um, and there's a restaurant opening in Grand Avenue. The Grand Avenue Courtyard, uh, the, I'm sorry, the Muppet Courtyard is going away. Grand Avenue, um, Grand Park is going to replace it. So, all right. And Tatiana reminded me that the new Star Wars area is called Galactic edge. Oh. All right, so now it's time to... Hi again, Dolores. Yeah, I'm back. Uh, I hope everybody made it back over here. I hate this when this happens, but 
All right, so we're back. Um, by the way, don't forget, we are giving away, whoops, got to show the right one, the blank copy of the uh, just blank pages, 150, 200 blank pages of Dad's just front and back cover, uh, even a bad picture on the back cover. Uh, just giving these away. These were these have been the books I've been showing every week. We're giving one away. If you'd like to get one, just type in, I want the book. At the end of this, we'll give one away. Um, Tatiana will pick us a winner, and we'll give one away. Um, anyway, put that put things where I can find them. I throw them back there and I got to turn around and get them. So I'm not going to do that. All right. So next is time for dad's tip of the week. Here we go. Dad's tip of the week. Dad here with Dad's Tip of the Week. This week I want to talk about the difference between PhotoPass and Memory Maker. A lot of confusion there around PhotoPass and Memory Maker. <clears throat> and I want to talk about when you should use PhotoPass, when you should use Memory Maker. Okay, let's start with PhotoPass because PhotoPass is kind of the overall program. PhotoPass is Disney's photography program. You see the photographers around Walt Disney World, guys with the white shirts, the cream colored vests, and the, and the cool cameras, um, those are photo pass photographers. They even have little photo pass here where dad's got WDW Magazine, they got photo pass. Um, those photographers are photo pass photographers. Photo pass is the system that takes the pictures and you can actually buy pictures using photo pass. You go to the camera stores, you can go to on, online, they have photopass.com, where you can, you can look at your pictures and buy your pictures individually um, or in groups and get them on cool stuff. Anyway, photo pass is how the pictures are taken and you can buy pictures through photo pass. Now, Memory Maker is a product, it's not a system, it's a product that Disney uses to take all of the pictures taken by PhotoPass, which includes the pictures on the rides, uh, even the videos on the rides. A lot of videos now, a lot of rides now have videos that are taken, um, that are tied to Magic Bands. And, and so these are all kept in one place on your memory maker and you can download them to your computer if you purchase the memory maker uh, product the memory maker package now it's kind of kind of expensive it's hundred sixty nine dollars for if you buy it before you go and it's hundred ninety nine dollars if you buy it in the park the thing about buying it in the park is it doesn't start until when you buy it so if you're already there you're, you're, you're not going to get anything before you buy it. Um, if you buy it beforehand, you want to buy it at least three days before you go because it won't start for three days if you buy it in advance, if you buy the advance copy. So um, if you get to the parks and you decide all of a sudden, hey, I want Memory Maker, $199. Three days before, $169. Okay, so when you buy Memory Maker, you get all of these photos that... Uh, that you would get through PhotoPass, but you get them all together, and you can download them onto your computer. You can share it. You you can share Memory Maker with your whole family, like when the uh, the man child and his Southern Belle and the princess and her Prince Charming and my, Mrs. Mom and I, when we all went a few years ago, we were all able to download the pictures to our our computers, and we can take them to anywhere we want and print them off. We don't have to get Disney's slightly overpriced pictures. Um, everything Disney does is slightly overpriced. <clears throat> but we can go anywhere we want. We can print them off on our on our printers. Uh, we can just keep them. We can make them wallpapers on our computers. So with PhotoPass, it's for when you want to buy individual pictures. When you want to get your picture made at Disney World, just buy one or two pictures, that's when you use PhotoPass. When you want to get a whole bunch of the whole week or the whole time you're at Disney World, you're going to have a bunch of people together, that's when you use Memory Maker. That's the difference between PhotoPass and Memory Maker. And that's Dad's Tip of the Week. Bye-bye. 
Oh, you caught me. Ah, you're back. Oh, hi. Uh, what am I reading? I have a real copy of my book. It's got words and everything. How cool. It's so close. I can almost, well, I can smell it. Smells like printing. Yeah, we're getting real close. Yesterday, I got a package with proof copies. We got five proof copies. No, we're not giving these away. But we got five proof copies of Dad's book. And as you can see, it looks pretty cool. Um, but uh, it's September 5th, barring a catastrophe of biblical proportions. September 5th is the day we're going to be rolling out Dad's Simple Fun Magic Guide to Walt Disney World Planning. That's the title. Um, it's a beautiful, it's a great book. It's just really, really special. Um, and I say that because I wrote it. Yeah, it, it, but it really is good. Uh, I think you're going to love it. Uh, September 5th, it'll be available on Amazon. Um, we'll keep telling you. We might even have some giveaways coming up. Um, but uh, we'll keep talking about it. But look for Dad's book, September 5th. We'll probably even have an email or two going out about it. If you'd like, you can go over to Simple funmagic.com. At the bottom, there's just a little form. And we'll send you updates for when things are coming out. Um, <clears throat> if, you've, if you've already signed up for our Simple Fun Magic list way back several months ago, you don't need to sign up again. But if, if you haven't signed up for our list, sign up simplefunmagic.com. At the bottom, just fill out that little form and um, <clears throat> we'll send you updates, maybe, if I remember to. Yeah, no, I'll try to send you some updates about how things are going. Um, but September 5th, not just, it's two weeks away, two weeks and a few days. It's so close. All right, so enough about the book. Uh, all right. It's so, it's, it's so good. I'm so excited. All right, so now looks like it's time for questions. If you have a question, uh, put it down in the comments and uh, I'll answer them here in a few minutes. Um, we, we always answer questions every week. Love to answer questions about Walt Disney World. If you have any kind of Walt Disney World question, put it down in the comments and we'll answer it here in about oh, probably 15-20 minutes. I've got six or seven that came in on our Ask Dad page. We've answered around a thousand questions over on Ask Dad. So we do this all the time. Love to answer your questions. So let's get started. Oh, yeah. Okay. We'll get back to that. All right. So let's get started. This one uh, comes from <clears throat> Amy in Peoria, Illinois. Amy says, we will be flying to Disney World via Frontier Airlines in 21 days. My kids are are planning to trade pins and are bringing a small amount of pins to get started. Should these be packed in our checked luggage or can they go in their carry-on bags? I'd hate for them not to be allowed through security, but I'm afraid to put them in their checked bags too, as they will be without them on that first day. Help! Um, <clears throat> Amy, trading pins, that's just, that's just a great Great thing. A lot of fun. Kids love trading pids. The, the cast members love trading with the kids. Um, it's just it's just a great idea. Will you be able to take them in your checked luggage? Abs uh, I'm sorry, in your carry-ons? Absolutely. The TSA re restrictions are have gotten lack less restrictive over the last few years. Um, in fact, I carry... A whole bunch of little these. This is a WDW magazine pins. I have Dad's guide. I've had Dad's guide pin. I think I'm out right now, but I had Dad's guide pins, and I keep them in my backpack. And I fly a lot, and I've never had anybody ask about them. One thing I might suggest is you get a Ziploc bag and you put them all in the Ziploc bag when you put them in your carry-on. That way, if TSA, if you get a crazy TSA agent and they want to look at them, you can just pull them all out in one quick swoop and put them all right back in. So put them in a Ziploc bag, put them in your carry-ons, don't worry about it. Maybe some, some cool TSA agent will want to trade a pin with you. Just kidding. Probably wouldn't happen, but... Um, it, it, you know, the the bottom line is, uh, let's see, got some music to go with it. Uh, 
Okay, I didn't cue it up quite well. Don't worry. Be happy. Bobby, you're not going to get into that. But don't worry. It's going to be fine. All right, so there you go, Amy. Hope that helps. All right, next. This one is from Anna in Leesburg, Virginia. Anna says, hello. Hi, Anna. I am getting married in a small private ceremony, but I'm going with my husband, kids, and parents to the fireworks dessert party at the Magic Kingdom. Can I wear one of these dresses? And she sent me some pictures. Um, <clears throat> I'm not planning on wearing a formal gown, but these are some of the styles I really like. Will these pass, or will I be asked not to wear them because it's against the dress code? Well, first, congratulations. You're getting married, and then you're going to Disney World. That's just the best of all worlds. It's what Mrs. Mom and I did. We got married, then we went to our honeymoon at Disney World. Um, I guess you probably live, well, no, you're flying in on Frontier Airlines. So getting married in Orlando, going to uh, Disney World, cool, cool, cool. Um, the dresses, um, I'm glad you sent this question in. I got a dress code question a couple of weeks ago, a dress question. Will this dress, the same question basically, will this dress fit, will I be allowed in? And Mrs. Mom tells me I whiffed on the answer. She said I didn't do a very good job. Um, <laughs> I have I have very supportive um, help with Mrs. Mom. She she helps me. She keeps me on the straight and narrow. So she says I didn't do a great job with that answer because I didn't look at the dress code. I didn't put the link in. I didn't talk about the actual dress code from Disney. So let's just do that now. I just happened to print it out. Tatiana put a link to it down in the comments. But here is the dress code right off the Disney website. Inappropriate attire. Attire that is not appropriate for the parks, which may result in refusal of admittance. Includes, but is not limited to, costume worn. Uh, costumes may not be worn by guests 14 years or older. Masks may not be worn by guests 14 years or older, unless they are for medical purposes. Clothing with objectionable material, including obscene language or graphics, excessively torn clothing, clothing which by nature excessively exposes portions of skin that may be viewed as inappropriate for a family environment. Uh, clothing with multiple layers are subject to search upon entry and objectionable tattoos. And none of those things describe the dress you're going to wear. I, I, it's not, it's, I won't say it's normal, but a lot of people will dress very nicely when they go to Disney World. Let's say you want to go to Monster Paul and eat a fabulous meal. You might dress up really nice. Cinderella's Royal Table. I've seen Cinderella people going to Cinderella's Royal Table being dressed very nicely. Um, so it's not, well, it's not, hey, well, it's, it may be an everyday occurrence, but, it, you know, not everybody's dressed in formal dress. Disney bounding is another uh, thing where people dress up. So people do dress nicely. I've gone to, we, when we do our big uh, Christmas party, Years, there's always been some big event. Um, there's a every year during Christmas time, there are events around Disney World. The Food and Wine Festival has a party, they have a big party that's kind of formal. So people go to Disney World in formal attire all the time. I will warn you not to bring an obvious photographer with you. Uh, Disney is really big on not having. Um, <clears throat> like uh, engagement pictures and, and well, they don't, it's, it's against their rules for a photographer to take professional um, <clears throat> for money photographs in the parks. Um, so just be careful about bringing your photographer, but your, your dresses are fine. The bottom line, dad's bottom line is your dresses look fine. Um, congratulations on, on getting married um, and being at Disney World. Cool. All right. Next question. By the way, if you have a question, throw it down in the comments. We've got uh, five, it looks like, already, and uh, I'll be answering here in about uh, 10 or 15 minutes. So put your question down in the comments, and I'll get, them, get to them here in just a couple minutes. All right. This one didn't have a name or an email, and that's important. When you hear the question, you'll kind of know, oops, I'm going to cert display tomorrow. 
Wednesday, 8-16. And I printed a map yesterday that included the layout, plus a list of where the restaurants and stores are located. I wanted to try to enlarge it and print it bigger so I didn't have to use a magnifier with my readers. I thought I printed it from your site, but I can't find it now. When I called Disney Customer Service yesterday looking for a map, they uh, they they told me they didn't know of one and that I should Google it. Hmm. Okay, this is really sad because I don't, I, I couldn't email them back. And I knew I wasn't going to answer this until Friday, but I couldn't email them back and say, okay, here's where you need to go. Um, <clears throat> uh, but, oh, uh, you know, that's why you, there's the name and email place up because I don't answer all of them. I sometimes send emails. But anyway, as to a map of Disney Springs, um, I, I don't have that on my site. Uh, I don't have, I, we, we have a maps page, but it's not really up to date, so we kind of need to go and update it. But um, we don't really do the maps. It's, it's just not something that we worry about too much. I had a note that just fall, fell down. Um, so I don't have it. It's not, you didn't find it on my site. Um, my guess is you might have found it on DisneyDining.com. My buddy Rick at DisneyDining.com, he, he has a page with uh, maps, the map of Disney Springs. Now, what it is, it's just a copy of the Disney map that they print and they hand out at the, at the parks and at Disney Springs. When you get to Disney Springs, you can get a map. They have them printed right there at Disney Springs. Um, uh, there are those cool maps that have been around forever. Um, I know Disney is trying to move away from some of those. They don't print as many options as they used to. The whole world is moving away from paper. Um, and it's sad, says the guy that owns a digital magazine. Um, <clears throat> but it is sad. Um, but paper is expensive. That's why we're moving away from it, because it's expensive. Disney wants you to use the app on your phone. That's why they created the app. The maps are right there in the app. The list of um, locations, the list of restaurants, the list of shops, all right there in the app. And that's what Disney wants you to do because they want to get away from that paper because uh, it costs them a bunch of money to print all that paper. Um, so, but you can find the bottom line, Dad's bottom line, is you can find that map at DisneyDining.com. Um, search his site and you'll find it. Or actually, just Google it and there'll be a bunch of them come up. Make sure you get Disney Springs and not Downtown Disney uh, because the Downtown Disney maps are old and they don't have all the locations on them. So, um, DisneyDining.com or just Google it and, or just go to Disney Springs and pick up a map when you walk in the door. All right. Next. Oh, this is the next one. Oh, yeah, we're going to take a little break. Here we go. I'm so excited, and I just can't hide. I'm about to lose control. You know, I'm, <laughs> we didn't time this very well, but it's calendar time. Uh, you know, it's time for the 2017. Hello. Why is that not working? Okay, let's try this. It's time for the 2017 WD Magazine, WDW Magazine wall calendar. Oh, was, I was, I write that, and I, I put that I'm so excited song up there because I really am. I Wednesday, I got to go down and see the proofs for the calendar. Now, I picked the pictures. I helped, you know, I, I do all... I'm, I'm involved from the beginning of the calendar. I've seen the proofs. We've been working on this for months, but I got to see the proofs Wednesday, and I got to tell you, I was just blown away. It is so beautiful this year. Um, we we the WDW magazine wall calendar is, is the prettiest wall calendar, the prettiest Disney wall calendar out there. You know, Disney puts out a nice wall calendar, but ours blows it away. Uh, ours is just beautiful. Um, this year we've gone with the theme of Walt Disney World after dark. So all nighttime photos, amazing shots. When you see this shot of Space Mountain uh, reflected in the water, uh, just incredible pictures. 
Um, and this month, this year we're doing a 16 month calendar. So it's going to go from November of 2017, November this year, all the way through February of 2018. Uh, <clears throat> so you got 16 incredible pictures. Somebody told me this week, they, they, uh, when the month is over, they take their picture and they hang it up on the wall. They frame it and they hang it on the wall. Um, really, the pictures are that beautiful. Um, so Sunday, watch your, watch your email uh, inboxes. Sunday, we're going to send you an email about the preview, uh, the, not the preview, but about the early bird sale. If you bought a calendar before, we've got a code for you that'll give you almost 25% off the calendar. Um, if you are new and you haven't bought one, you'll get a code that's 10 percent off the calendar. You got to be on our email list to get those. So if you're not on our email list, be sure to sign up. <clears throat> um, we'll have the link down below. As Tatiana will put the link down where you can sign up for the email or just go to Dad's Guide and there'll be something that pops up. There's a place on the side that where you can go over and click a button and email just name and uh, first name and email address. That's all we need. Uh, and you'll get tagged and you'll be on our list to get the, uh, the email on Sunday. Um, and again, it's, it's just beautiful. I'm so excited and I just can't hide it. Okay. I'm about to lose control and I think I like it. Oh, I gotta stop. Just gotta stop. All right. We've got three or four more questions and then we'll get to your questions. Remember, we're doing a giveaway. If you just joined us after the little mess up, we're doing a giveaway, not the real book, but the blank book. Uh, no actual words in this one, but a whole bunch of blank pages. If you'd like this, put I want the book down in the comments. We'll give away one of these. I'll mail it to you next week. Uh, so put I want the book down in the comments, and we'll do a giveaway here in just a few minutes. All right, here we go. Next question. This one comes from Noel in Vancouver, Canada. <clears throat> Hi, Dad. Hi, Noel. I've been following your blog for quite some time and love all the information you provide. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, we are a family of four with a six-year-old and a two-year-old. We are planning our next trip to Walt Disney World in March. It's our third time there. This trip is going to be a big trip, planning 10 uh, days and 11 nights, or 11 nights and 10 days. It's the same thing, only backwards. I'm dyslexic. Four out of three air traffic controllers are. We enjoy vacationing on a slower pace, not necessarily finishing everything in the parks. We stayed at Animal Kingdom Lodge last time, and it's really fun. The buses were great. However, we only managed the Animal Kingdom, uh, Epcot, Fantasyland, and Magic Kingdom. Uh, <clears throat> I have bad knees and my husband has a poor back. We can't do long walks. Two young kids do not help with the situation. <clears throat> Excuse me. By incorporating some rest days, hopefully we won't get tired out and we will be able to visit all four parks this time. Uh, we'd also like to take a trip to Legoland. I can't seem to decide on which resort to stay in. We have narrowed it down to Bay Lake Tower, the new Copper Creek, or the Boardwalk. Which resort has the shortest walking distance to transportation and what tips do you have for us? Thank you for reading this. <clears throat> okay, well, um, I can really, really relate to this. Um, I have knee, leg issues. I've got two artificial knees, just had an artificial hip this summer. Uh, I've got back problems. This is mom has knee problems. Um, so this is just right down our alley. Um, first thing I did was I checked with my buddies um, because I'm, haven't been to all of those those hotels. Well, have I? No, I haven't been to all of them, but I've been to some of them. Um, so I had our buddies at Destinations to Travel. I asked them to answer the question for us. Um, they do a great job. They know Disney World almost as, as well as Dad does. So I asked them, and Chris Boyer, one of their agents, he, here's what he answered. I'm sorry, this one was from Stephanie Walsh. Stephanie Walsh says, understanding there is so much to do at Walt Disney World and keeping it real that you may not get everything done is a wonderful perspective to have going on a vacation. Taking things at a comfortable pace for your family makes things less stressful. Hopefully, with this extended vacation, you will be able to visit all four parks and uh, your days to rest and explore the amenities of your resort and to rejuvenate you for the upcoming days. In my opinion, deciding on which resort comes 
down to where you think you will be spending most of your time. Uh, if it's in the Magic Kingdom, your tar is your target. Uh, you can't go wrong with Bay Lake Tower. It has easy access to the monorail, but if you're spend planning on spending a lot of time in Epcot or Hollywood Studios, I'd suggest the Disney Boardwalk Inn because it's centrally located between two parks and has a boat, a uh, short boat ride to either. <clears throat> Copper Creek would offer a longer boat ride to the Magic Kingdom, and there's some extended walking to get to the boat transportation, and I'll add the bus transportation. And with bad knees and a poor back, a lot of walking may not be the, it may not be the best option. Have you considered, and this is something I would say too, have you considered a scooter rental for you and your husband to share? Uh, when knees and backs start causing problems, you can utilize the scooter to give your body a reprieve, reprieve for a little while. Think you're on a track for magical slow rest days, uh, slow paced days, and realistic goals. Um, I agree with the scooter thing. Um, Mrs. Mom and I are going in October and November, and <clears throat> for the first time, I think we're going to end up renting the scooter every day because my my problems um, with my hip. Um, she's doing she's doing good, but she, we both are to the point where we have mobility problems, and um, renting the scooter is a is really a good idea. Um, <clears throat> And I really like the, the slow it down plan. Um, in fact, that's one of the things that you'll find right here in my book. Um, there's, a, uh, there's a whole section called Stop and Smell the Roses, and it's about slowing down. Um, <clears throat> here's, here's one. Here's right from the front of it. It's real easy to be caught up in the hustle and bustle of Walt Disney World. Almost every website, almost every Disney guru, almost everyone that talks about Walt Disney World says the same thing. Hurry, hurry, hurry. You're going to miss something. Hurry, hurry, hurry. I say that's just not the best way to do things. In fact, uh, and this is right there in the book, I say go listen to Mac Davis. You got Okay, so Max says to stop and smell the roses, and I agree with Max. Slow down. It's a great idea. Slow down um, and, and enjoy. Uh, 10 or 11, 10 days at Disney World should be plenty of time to see everything. Go, enjoy, take your time, relax. You can even get a trip to Legoland in. All right, so that's the bottom line. Next question. I didn't realize how much time I spent on that one. Got to quit. Here we go. Next question. <clears throat> uh, this one's from Kennedy in Texarkana, Texas. Uh, I know that. Oh, well, she might be in Arkansas because Texarkana, Texarkana, it's in both. I'm wanting to go for my 21st birthday, which falls on December 28th. Do you have any tips on the best thing to do or where to stay for not too much money? Also, should I be worried about the crowds and try to plan a trip on not on my actual birthday? Thank you. Kennedy, wow. <laughs> I, can, I can relate. My birthday is December 30th, so two days later, you almost made it to my birthday. Uh, <clears throat> the Christmas time at Walt Disney World, beautiful, beautiful, wonderful. Th love going to Christmas at Disney World. In fact, this just happened just this week. Mrs. Mom comes into the office. She says, I got a proposition for you. A proposition. A prop um, how about we go to Walt Disney World for your birthday next year? I got a round of birthday coming up next year. What about 60? Uh, I got a big birthday coming up next year. So how about we go to Disney World for your birthday next year? I'm thinking. You got to be crazy. I don't want to go to Disney World that week. The week of Christmas, between Christmas and New Year's, from about December 23rd to January 2nd, is the busiest week of the year, the busiest and the most expensive week of the whole year, by far. None compare. Um, asking where you should stay, cheap, you can't. I mean, you might be able to stay in Tampa uh, and drive over from Tampa, but it's just the busiest, most expensive time of the year. In fact, 
every day during that period of time, around 140,000 people will be in the Magic Kingdom. Now, last week we talked that there were 157,000 people on average a day at Walt Disney World. Well, during that week, 140,000 will be in the Magic Kingdom. Uh, just a crazy busy time to be at Walt Disney World. Parks will close in, in the mornings to new guests. I mean, it's just... If the, the bottom line is, if you can move your trip, go earlier in the month, look at Dad's crowd calendars. Look at the December crowd calendars. We'll put a link down, uh, Tatiana put a link down in the comments. Put the December crowd calendar, look at that. Look at the January crowd calendar. You'll see earlier in December, the crowds aren't bad. In January, right after the second, the crowds kind of go down to nothing. So, Go before, go after, but that week is probably not the best idea. Crazy crowds. Crazy crowds. Okay. Here we go. I've got two more questions, and we'll get to your questions. If you have any questions, please throw them in the comments, and I'll, I'll answer them here in a minute. Uh, hi, Dad. I was just wondering if you knew any uh, issues with the buses at the Yacht Club as far as wait times and stops. And this one's from Betsy in Mobile, Alabama. Betsy, I don't know any particular issues about the Yacht Club <clears throat> that they're having special issues. What I do know is the Yacht Club shares bus service with the uh, Swan and Dolphin, <clears throat> the Beach Club, and the Boardwalk Inn. So <clears throat> it, you're always in the middle because it's kind of in the middle. You're always making stops when you come to the Yacht Club, when you leave the Yacht Club, before you get to the parks. So <clears throat> there's not any particularly bad things about the Yacht Club. It's just that where it's located and sharing the bus service, it's just kind of in the middle uh, of those four resorts. You, you, you can have the same thing over at the Magic Kingdom resorts, you know, the, the, the Contemporary, the Polynesian, and the Grand Floridian share bus service. So you kind of have the same thing there. Um, it's just, the bus service isn't terrible. Uh, I used it a little bit. I stayed at the Yacht Club uh, a few years ago. Uh, I did use it going to the Magic Kingdom, but I had a car because I always have a car. And just to the Magic Kingdom, I used the bus. Um, and I, it's not terrible, but it, it can be a little, um, <clears throat> what do they say, uh, spotty. Here's spot. Um, <laughs> so there you go, Betsy. All right, this is the last one I've got. We'll get to yours. If you've got a question, stick it down now, and we'll get right to them. Uh, all right, Keith from New York says, going to Disney World the week before Christmas with two nights, with my family of six, my wife and I are four children, seven, five, three, and eight months. We need a sweet hotel. So far, the Carib Royale, Royale, Carib Royale and the Lake Buena Vista Village and Spa were recommended. <clears throat> Which do you recommend or do you prefer other options? Thanks. Keith, um, I'm a Disney guy. Um, first, I would choose to go and stay on property. You don't have to stay in one of the Disney Vacation Club suites. <clears throat> They're very expensive. Uh, you've got the Art of Animation and the All-Stars have the family suites um, that are a lot more reasonable. Um, you will play, pay a premium to be at, on Disney property, but the good thing about being on Disney property is you don't have to... <clears throat> um, you don't have to go off property if you want to go back to, to for a nap. You can catch Disney uh, transportation to your hotel uh, and go back to the parks. It's just a lot easier to go back and forth between the parks. Um, and you have that Disney magic. It just is kind of magic staying at Disney. Now, if you're going to stay off property, I don't know specifically about the Carib uh, Royale or the Lake Buena Vista Village and Suites. Never stayed at either one um, <clears throat> because I typically stay on property. But they are both well-reviewed on uh, TripAdvisor. Both have good numbers on TripAdvisor. Um, I would say that one thing you might check into is uh, staying in a, ho a house, off-site in a house. Houses, you can get up to a five- or six-bedroom house for about the price of a value resort. Um, 
150 200 dollars a night and you can stay in a house with a pool but there again there are trade-offs you're going to have to have a a car you're going to have to pay for parking all that kind of stuff so uh, <clears throat> there are trade-offs me i would probably see if i can find a way to stay on disney property first i know with the baby you need uh refrigerator and microwave all the Disney hotels have refrigerators. The family suites have microwaves. Um, so that's taken care of. Um, and <clears throat> so s number one, st but Creed uh, Royale and the Lake Buena Vista Village, as far as I know, they're great hotels. So um, kind of hope that helps. Um, not didn't, I know that's not a great answer, but it gives you some options. I would suggest that you get in touch with destinations to travel. Uh, call our our partners over there. That's what this is what they deal with every day. Um, they'll be able to help you make the best selection. So um, we'll put a there's probably a link already down in the comments. Tatiana put a link down in the comments to destinations to travel. At the bottom of that page, there's a form you can fill out. Fill out that form, send it in. Um, they do work with offsite hotels. They do work. I think they still work with one of the uh, the house uh, the the rental house companies so uh, get in touch with destinations to travel and, and let them um, come up with uh, a plan for you all right so whew, now we're done with those questions um, let's get to your questions you sent in questions um, last call for questions by the way uh, if you've got a question you want me to answer stick it in the questions now and we'll get to them in just a minute all right, here we go. Deborah Lee asks, do you think they will ever include people with the dining plan uh, in mobile ordering? Um, yeah, Deborah, I do. I think they will. They've been rolling out mobile ordering. Um, they were testing. They've been testing it. It hasn't even been available in all the quick service resorts. Mobile ordering, if you don't know, is where you can order pre-order your food on your app. You tell them... Um, what you want, you tell them when you're going to be there, you tell them when you're there, and you can actually, Disney will have your food ready for you, right? Uh, you don't have to stand in that line and pay for your food. So mobile ordering, I, I'm i just sure that the next step will be that they will have payments on the mobile ordering. Um, <clears throat> so, I'm sorry, the dining plan, right now you have to pay for it. But uh, I'm sure that soon it, you will be able to use the dining plan on mobile ordering. It's just the next step. But now that the test is over and it's been rolled out through all the resorts, that's the next step. All right, here's the next one. Alan Curtis asks, hey, Dad, with the first Mickey's Not-So-Scary Halloween party one week from today, it's already the end of August. Oh, my goodness. When should we expect uh, Disney to release the info and the map? Um, Alan, the day the first party starts. Um, Disney, I don't know why, but they hoard information like that. Um, there's... Uh, Probably, it, it will probably come out sometime next week. Uh, well, obviously, it'll be coming out next week. But, you know, they there's probably not a li lot of difference from the past. But typically, Disney doesn't tell us what's going to happen at the parties. Uh, we just find out the first day, they, the first party, we get all the information, and it'll start rolling out there. So um, I'd expect it the night of the first party. Um, might come before that, but that's when I'd expect it. Okay, Joe says, going to Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party on December 7th. Is early December a good time? Bought tickets already, so I guess I'm really needing reassurance. <laughs> well, John, I said Joe, I think, but that's John. Um, John, <clears throat> you're, you're okay. You're okay like uh, we tried to play Bobby McFerrin a little while ago. Don't worry. Be happy. Or be happy. Um, it's it's going to be fine. Uh, early December, those parties um, are are really slow times. So um, just don't have to worry about it. It's, it's a good time to go. You picked a good one. You'll be fine. All right. Well, again, last call for questions. We've got just a couple more. Here we go. Roger says, Memory Maker, if you purchase, are the photos available online forever or only for a limited time? That's a good question, Roger, and I didn't cover that 
in, in the video. <clears throat> photos are only available for, I think it's 45 days. At the end of 45 days, the photos go away. Uh, and they're not retrievable. So you've got like 45, it might be 90, but I'm pretty sure it's 45 days to download your photos onto your computer. Um, and uh, that's just Disney's rules. Don't know why, but I guess it's a storage thing for Disney, but uh, 45 days. However, kind of, I know that I have seen photo pass photos from my last trip when I went to my next trip. So, but the photo pass plan, you will, I mean, sorry, the memory maker plan is only available for 45 days. All right, here's our last question. Uh, Paul says, ooh, those W, are, are those WDW magazines and dad's pins available for us? Uh, Paul, <laughs> you might see one. Um, uh, no, we, we, We've given them away in the past. Um, I kind of run out of them. Um, I've got a few, and uh, you never know when one might show up in a, a box that you or something you buy from me. Uh, but for the most part, if you meet me in the parks, if you see me in the parks, come say hello. I might have one for you. Um, if I don't have P-I-N pens, pins, I might have P-E-N pens. Um, this is a WDW magazine. We just got brand new pens. Uh, yes, I'm digging for one. Um, we've got WDW magazine, which are black with a little WDW magazine on it. And we've got Simple Fun Magic pen, pen, pens. Uh, in Oklahoma, those two words are exactly the same. Pens and pens. Um, you just have to know which way they're spelled. These are pens and these are pens. Um, so we've got both. See me if you see me in the parks. I'll be in the parks in October, into October 29th through um, November 5th. If you see me in the parks, not hey, hey Dad, and I, I'll have something for you, whether it is a pin or a pen. <sighs> Thank you for my Canadian friends for helping me with grammar. Okay. All right, I think that's it. Uh, Tatiana, do we have a winner? Um, thanks to our partners at Celebration Shirts uh, for sponsoring Lunch with Dad. Um, uh, be watching this weekend for the email about um, <clears throat> the calendars, pre-ordering the calendars. They'll, the, everybody, the, in the email, there will be a discount code either 20, around 25% for previous purchasers, 10% for everybody else. So um, look for that email uh, and uh, order your calendars. Um, they're going to be beautiful. September, mid-September is when we'll start shipping. So um, next couple of weeks, you'll probably see some video of it being printed and it being put together. I do that every year, and uh, it's really cool. All right, so the winner is Matthew Davis. Matthew Davis, you won the blank book. Um, uh, Matthew, put your um, information, hit message us, and uh, put your information, uh, chipping information. We'll get that out to you um, here next week. Um, thanks, everybody, for, for listening today. Um, we got to wrap it up. It's time to say now. It's time to say goodbye to Dad and all his friends. <laughs> oh, man. I hope you had fun this week, um, and um, we'll see you next week. Thank you. Bye-bye.